Hello makers, I am back in my office. Well, uh, to, to be completely honest, I've been back for like four days now, um, but it took me that long to actually get back into a normal routine. So yes, for most of you that know, I was at Murph last weekend and it was a mind blowing experience and I wanted to share with you the highlights of that trip. First and foremost though, I wanna give a shout out to Filament One, uh, who were my sponsors for this trip. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been able to make it to Murph and meet so many of you guys. Make sure you check them out and especially check out their new Glint series filament, which was extremely popular at Murph. So I'm not even sure where to begin on how to describe Murph. It is a playground of 3D printing. If you're into 3D printing, this is one of those shows where you have to go at least once in your life. It's by far one of the biggest community events in the world and I highly recommend that you visit. And um, I've heard rumors that next year it's gonna be much bigger than it was this year. Now this will be a longish video because I do want to share with you everything that I've managed to see and possibly some of the things I missed during Murph. The event was jam packed and seeing that this was my first visit there, I wasn't exactly sure how I'm going to juggle the time. I thought that I would have more time to record stuff, but unfortunately it got so busy and so packed that I barely got to move. And on Sunday when I was planning to start recording, most of the tables and vendors were starting to clear out. So I only got some limited footage of all the things that I really wanted to do. But there were a few things that really stood out for me and I really, really wanted to share with you today um, what impressed me the most. This year's stars uh, within the 3D printing community were definitely the Tool Changer and the Rail Core. Those two printers or those two machines have been almost everywhere. Um, everyone was rocking their own version of it and it was awesome to see. I definitely agree with Joel that the rail core is probably the king of the hill when it comes to 3D printing. I did try, try, try is a very, very strong word here, uh, to help Eddie Moser build his rail core during Murph. Unfortunately, it was almost impossible because every five minutes um, I had to stop and talk to someone um, and, and that's the excuse I'm gonna use. As for the tool changer, well, E3D was also there showcasing their tool changer and possibly most of the beta units that went out were there as well. They were showcasing the uh, new Super Volcano hot end alongside with the Duet Wi-Fi guys which were just sitting next to them also showcasing their capabilities with their board on the rail core and the tool changer. Now speaking of tool changer, one of the things which I really loved was a tool changing pen plotter by Joshua Vasquez. He really took the time to explain to me how he developed like a very scaled down version of the tool changer, but it is a pen plotter instead. So you give it different size pens to draw out things that you wanted to draw and it has the same movement as a tool changer would do where it picks up one pen, draws what it needs to with that size pen, then moves on to another pen and picks that pen up. It was absolutely awesome to see and I'm hoping that the files will be released very soon because I really, really wanna to try to recreate one here on the channel. I did also hang out with the Repcord guys. Yes, um, they were showcasing their rep box, which I did manage to get one with custom signs for 3D Maker New for the channel. I'll Apart from that, Joe Mike was also showcasing his spool winder, which are 3D printed um, spool cores which wind the filament up again so you can use them with the MMU2 uh, and not have any slack on the filament. Then there was also Prusa showcasing their SL1 resin 3D printer which is about to ship. I have to say that machine looks extremely clean and very easy to use and I, and I think that's what the purpose of this machine is. It's just to make resin 3D printing more streamlined and more easy to use. There was also the White Knight 3D printer which Joel recently did a video on and that thing is absolutely insane. That's definitely a project I'd be more than happy to get on board with on the channel. It's an Infinity Z 3D printer with a massive print volume, completely open source. And according to the creator, it would cost around $2,000 to actually build one yourself. So that is a lot of bang for your buck. It's controlled by Duet Wi-Fi and it runs on Bontech gears. 
it is it is quite a sight and quite a beastly machine and i have to say the print quality was quite impressive so if if you're onto a production style of printing where you want several parts that is definitely the kind of printer you would want Bontech were also there showcasing their latest iterations of the Bontech extruder. Uh, most importantly, their new Mark III extruder, which was developed alongside the community to fit as seamlessly as possible on the Prusa Mark III. They did have a Mark III on display equipped with the Mark III uh, Bontech extruder, which was printing absolutely beautifully. This Mark III did have the bare upgrade frame. Now, speaking of bare upgrade kits, I did speak with LDO Motors, which are um, producers of some awesome stepper motors, alongside with gorgeously colored anodized aluminum extrusions, which I have a kit um, coming along. It should be here next week. It's going to be in red and I'm going to do a Mark III Malta edition. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. There was also Jason from Pattern to Print who was showcasing the most awesome lithophane that you could possibly ever imagine it just looks insane and videos cannot do it justice considering that that is literally done with just three colors the way he used the uh the palette too in order to make sure that very fine layers go on top of each other at the right place at the right time with the right color it just produced so many vibrant colors and it was literally just looking at a digitized photo. It was absolutely mind-blowing. I really do hope that this becomes much more mainstream because at the moment it's very labor intensive for him. So if you are a developer and you're into this kind of thing, reach out to Jason. You never know, maybe you guys could come up with some UI where the common users like us, the noobs, would be able to print something like this. I also had some time to speak to uh, Core 3D Tech about the large, the impressively large um, Delta printer that was custom made. And it is absolutely mind blowing to see this machine work. It has this awesome adjustable system where if he, he doesn't need to use the whole volume of the printer, the bill plate can simply rise upwards and he would just be using that build space and if you need to print something tall then the build plate would simply go all the way down again to the bottom and the head would come down and start printing up he's done some incredible things with that machine and i i, I was absolutely blown away with the creativity of some people in there and speaking of creativity there was also um the buster printer this is a 3d printer made out of salvaged parts and the frame are actually shelving units. And this guy simply turned those into a 3D printer with very little parts. And I have to say the print quality was actually quite impressive for that kind of machine. The possibilities of actually extending this machine and having several um, um, shelves on top of each other, having something that replicates one print on five different shelves at the same time with such a massive volume, that's an idea worth exploring further. And so, so I was completely gobsmacked um, when I saw this machine. I was completely impressed. Another extremely creative 3D printer was the, uh, the 3D printer from 3D Printing World. This is a completely 3D printed 3D printer. And when I say everything is 3D printed, I mean only the stepper motors and the hot end, plus the board and the wires, of course. Those are the only things which were not 3D printed because everything else, whether it was the uh, the belts that were printed in TPU, whether it was the Z uh, axis lead screws, those were 3D printed as well. Linear rails, 3D printed. The print quality was actually quite good. The guy from 3D Printing World does these amazing creations where he, he goes really deep into the engineering part of things and tries to transform everything um, with 3D printers and he, he's done puzzle boxes, he's done a lot of mechanical parts and he tries to use solely 3D printing and that, that was absolutely amazing.
Hotens was there as well, showcasing their new line of J-Head Hotens, uh, which are extremely sleek, I have to say. Quite functional, very adjustable, but what impressed me most was there's the system they were showcasing there. This was a tool changer kind of system, um, but it wasn't running on Duet Wi-Fi. It was actually running on a Ramps 1.4. They are changing the system and make the tool heads run on a bus system. So a simple Ramps 1.4 has the ability to use four different tool heads. Now this will be released later on in the year, but the prospect of this is absolutely insane and I'm really looking forward to it. There were also the Mosaic guys showcasing the Palette 2 and Palette 2 Pro. Um, I didn't get a lot of time to speak to Mitch, unfortunately, but I was very happy to finally meet him. However, they did show something extremely interesting. They had an Ultimaker 3 running on the Palette 2. Now, most of you probably know that um, Mosaic does not do 2.85 millimeters um, uh, filament. However, they are working on a conversion system where essentially you can literally convert um, an Ultimaker 3 into a 1.75 millimeter and therefore you'd be able to use your Palette 2 or Palette 2 Pro, which absolutely is awesome. I did spend some time speaking with Creative Bot Duo. Um, this this young dude, um, which is so passionate about 3D printed, created this insanely large machine, which was actually the first machine which I've seen that uses the Super Volcano hotends. Those things are ridiculously large. And not only that, this machine has an IDEX system running on it. And the build volume, I can't remember exactly, but it was a gigantic, as you can see. And yet, it can still produce amazing print quality. It runs on a Do-It Wi-Fi. Uh, it has interchangeable hot ends, which makes life much easier, especially for production of large prints. And I also saw one of the most creative ways to use a maker coin and integrate swatches into that. I spoke to Greybeard3D who had this display, this beautiful display of Marvins with all kinds of colors. And what he does is he prints a sample of every filament he gets his hands on. He has over 300 if I recall correctly and he just displays them there. Now, apart from that, he has made this maker coin, which has three inlets inside. And what you do is you take small samples of filament and you just insert them into these slots and you have yourself a color swatch of the filament. Incredibly ingenious and a really good looking maker coin. Now, unfortunately, mentioning absolutely everyone that I met is going to be impossible, mainly because I'm getting old and my memory is just... Secondly, I just didn't have enough time and I, I, I got to meet some amazing people. I, I was humbled by the amount of people that actually came to speak to me. I was completely blown away um, and it just it just made my, my time there just so much more special. There was also the Open RC Championship once again. It was a blast to watch, it was hilarious. Lots of crashes, lots of carnage, lots of disappointments and also victory for some, uh, but it was absolutely awesome to watch. And, and there's just a small, small part of what there was, there was so much more. There was Alien 3D that with, with their massive community alien. From my end, that is it. I just want to give you a bit of rundown. There was so much, unfortunately, that I missed that I just didn't allocate enough time for because I was not prepared for such an event. But I will be back next year and I will make sure to to allocate my time accordingly, maybe interview some people um, and take it from there. But for now, that is it from my end, guys. I'm gonna leave you with a short clip of everything that I didn't talk about here. Make sure you also visit Filament One. Um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to attend Murph, um, which was mind-blowing experience. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, um, ring the bell for notifications, and as always, 
Happy making, guys.